Today, I want us to I want to start from Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse eleven. Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse eleven. Hallelujah! What a faithful God! He's such a mighty God. Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse eleven. Amen. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. I want to speak today on um, grace beyond limitations. Grace beyond limitations. The world we live in today cannot be truer than this wisdom from King Solomon. The world we live in today, the things that are happening around us, these words from this great wise king, wise king Solomon, I believe explains a lot of things and answers a lot of questions that you and I might have. And I, and I want you to follow me closely because as I begin to teach, it, I do not want anybody to stay on one side of the message, probably thinking this is just for me or to even think that I am beyond what is being said. Grace beyond limitation. Solomon saw many things. Solomon was a man of great wisdom. Solomon was a man of great understanding. Solomon experienced a lot of things. Good, bad, and the ugly. He, he was from righteousness to sin to foolishness to wisdom. And he explored everything. Now, he explored fully. He explored foolishness. Explored wisdom. Explored everything. Now, if you want to see a man who's done it all, then you talk about Solomon. And then he said that after all said and done, I returned and I saw that under the sun, we are all under the sun, praise God, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Bread doesn't come to the wise. Riches to men understanding, no favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Let me talk about these three things. Number one, I want to talk about meritocracy. If only meritocracy is true, this life will be better. We know what meritocracy is. You get what you merit. In other words, if you apply for a job and you are the best candidate, you should get the job. Amen. Uh, if you are the smartest person in the interview, you should get the job. Uh, the best person should be the leader. The smartest person should be the class captain. Meritocracy tells us that, you know, what you get is what you merit, what you have capacity. If only that is true then you wouldn't need any connection to get a job. If meritocracy is true, you wouldn't need to know anybody before you get a contract. So, I will submit to you that it is a lie. It is a complete lie. The world we live in would like to say things that are supposed to be true, but they're not true. And you know, and I know, that there are so many people you're properly better than, but they have better opportunities than you in life. You know, and I know, that there are people that you'll be on the same job with. They don't even have a clue what they're doing, but they're going to get promoted because before you. And whether you like it or not, it will continue to happen because we've been lied to about meritocracy, but it's not true. 
anywhere in the world if you want to be deceived you quickly be thinking about africa there's only in africa you need connection it's not true the people who rule us in this country they're a bunch of people who are friends all the days of their life who give contracts to their friends and give contracts to their relatives and deceive all of us and pour billions and billions into covid and then go behind the contract they are their cousins and their brothers and their friends where is meritocracy where is meritocracy if you are a christian and you begin to think that you are going to be pursuing things and you're going to get things because you are qualified for it on your own then you don't understand grace what about hard work oh yeah Another lie we've been told is that if you are hardworking, you will make it in life. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. Who's done this to us? It's not true. It's not true. Now, you see, you have to understand. You, you see, you see, listen to this. The Bible is scientific. We can work with facts and figures as long as it's within the context of the word of God. You know very well that you have been more hardworking than a lot of people who have made it more than you two of us. Now, let's even make it simple. Some of us probably are friends who won't go to library, who won't show up in all of their lectures, and then result come, the guy has a better result than you. Have you been there before? You slept in library every day of your life. You struggle with it too, too. But these guys won't even show up, but somehow, somehow, I know some of us have been accused like that. One of my friends told me, he said he's tired, that I'm always on my bed. Well, if you're always on your bed, how do you get your exams done? I said, I don't know. I'm not lying to you. You can ask my wife. She's known me for a long time. He said, I don't know. He said, you're always on your bed. Said, but I read on my bed. You sleep in the library, <laughs> praise God. It's two different things. You sleep in the library. I read on my bed, praise God. You know, some people just like to say they go to the library. They go there to gist, to talk, to have a day out. And then they come and say, oh, I've been in the library for the whole day. Who is deceiving who? Hard work. But I'm saying even when you are hard working, our parents told us, if you walk out, Everything will be possible. Uh, it's not true. It's not true doesn't mean there are no elements of truth in it, but it's not absolute. It's not absolutely true that everyone who works hard will make it in life. You know that it's not true. You know. Some of us here, there are things that are falling to you that you didn't work for. Anybody wave your hand if you're like that. And then some of us here, there are things you sweated on, but nothing happened. Anybody like that? You've been told, it's hard work. It's hard work. If you read, you must pass. Oh, how many of you have done driving tests and you failed? <laughs> Theory test shook you up. Amen. <laughs> Go and ask some of us. I remember the Kennedy's testimony. You go and ask him after <laughs> and ask him to tell you about his testimony. How he's never failed all his life until he did theory test. I, I'm, I'm telling you. You, 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 you see, listen to this. Listen carefully to this. You need to understand as Christians, don't be arrogant in your sweat. Don't be arrogant in your hard work because you can walk out and fail. If you're someone that builds your life purely on hard work, you don't understand grace. And then the one I want to probably dwell a little bit more is this. Systems. Wow. Systems and structures are there so that everybody will have equal right oh yeah like nhs like nhs so everybody can get into hospital and be treated the same way uh, but i'm not having a go at anybody in nhs but i just want to tell you it's not true it's not true because you've seen a lot of researches you've seen a lot of proof that if you happen not to be white the chances that you'll be treated poorly it's always there. Now, it might not have happened to you, praise God, for your life. See, 
systems. When there is a systems, everything works. I still listened to it yesterday. Now, now, COVID was supposed to be a leveler. But then we know 20% Southern Asians more likely to die of COVID. And many other statistics that are very staggering. It's not been a leveler. Don't be deceived that the systems of the world will keep you safe. If you depend on the system and you think that is the policies of uh, uh, Boris Johnson, what Putin is doing, uh, that will determine the outcome of your life, you've just deceived yourself. Because there's no system that is perfect. Because you see, you see, what, what happens to some of us? Because we're coming from a system that is ridiculously bad. Uh, some of us are coming from a system that is no system. A systemized system. So when you get to a place where there seems to be a lot of order, you get overwhelmed. And you suddenly think, this is new Jerusalem. No, it's not. There's evil everywhere in the world. There are evil people everywhere in the world. The art of man is desperately wicked. You understand? You're still going to find in this country that if you don't know what you're doing and God is not with you, you're still going to suffer. Yeah. You're still going to apply for a job and they just interview you for nothing because they want to give it to their brother. It's still going to happen here in this country. The only person who doesn't fail is God. So now, we can agree with Solomon now that genuinely the race is not for the swift. We can agree with Solomon every day of our life that the battle is not for the strong. Bread, not for the wise. You can look at something that you can predict the outcome, but you can completely get it wrong. I don't want to label us, but I, there is, I had a statistics yesterday, so no, so don't worry. I'm not, you, you won't understand for many people. Yeah. I, was, I, I was watching snooker. I was watching snooker. I like snooker. I like snooker. I like tennis. I like football. Uh, but you see, the best thing to do outside Bible is animals. That's the truth. But you see, I was watching snooker and I saw something that's serious. If you want to know, I'll show you later. Two guys played, uh, and one is Max Selby, number two in the world, defending Masters champion, and Yam Bing Tao, 22-year-old. Fantastic game. But I'll tell you the surprising thing. Apart from the fact that they played the longest frame in the history of the Crucible. What's he talking about? Don't worry. But this is the point I want to make. The statistics I learned from it. I'll show you if you want. I took the picture on the TV. The statistics show that on every bit of play, Max Selby was better. Safety percentage, total number of shots, uh, or putting, everything, everything was better. But who won the game? Yambi Tao. You know why? If you understand tennis, you would understand this. It's to get the right point. When you look at the statistics, if I take the scores away, say, wow, this person would have won. Point blank. He potted over 1,300 balls. The other guy, overall, about 1,100. But he won. Because in life, there are many things that only God knows. And many of us are so used to adding things together to be equal to something. And in our thoughts, we don't give room for the supernatural. Because everything has to add up. I've come to tell you today that you will begin to get things you didn't work for. Oh, yeah, yeah. You begin to reap result in a contradictory system. Uh, you're going to apply for a job that you thought you won't get and God will give to you. It is important for a child of God to know that there are many things in life that are beyond one plus one equals to two. 
And even in the life of people who don't believe God, it's the same. The race is not for the swift. It's not like that. We used to joke, and you know this, that if it's hard work that brings wealth, it's the people that are sweating every day that should have more money. Well, you know and I know that you don't have time to play tennis. You don't have time to play golf. You don't have time to go swimming. But all the people who are paying your salary, that's what they do with their time. Ask yourself a question. We live in a system who processes us to be slaves. Oh my God. I don't want to push that too much. We live in a system that arranges our life to be slaves. Pay you more to make you work more. Pay you more to steal your time. Pay you more so that you don't have time for your children. Pay you more so that you wreck your marriage. Pay you more so that you can't serve God. Pay you more so that you don't have time for your parents. Pay you more so that you can rest. Pay you more so that you can go on holiday. Pay you more so that you are a slave. That's what it is. Because you can make decisions on the outcome of your life. Everything about you is predetermined by somebody else who is putting money in your pocket. Slavery, that's what it's called. Pay you more to be there all the time. Pay you more to come. You don't want to come, please, I'll give you money, show up. You don't need to go on holiday, I'll give you money, show up. You don't even need to go to church. I'll pay you uh, to get rid of God, come. Slavery, that's what it's called. And some of you, after this message, you won't like me. But you know I like myself. Because after the message, I will forget that I'm the preacher. And I'll come and have a laugh with you. You know, that's, you know immediately I get out of here. I've, I've forgotten who preached. Amen. <laughs> I forget who preached. I'm just looking for a cup of tea. Listen to this. As a child of God, understand that there is grace. To give you reward that the system can't give. Listen carefully to this. Let me make this note. I have not in any way tell you not to work hard and be diligent. I have not in any way said you shouldn't abide by the laws of the land and the systems. I have not in any way said any of those things. I've just told you that as a child of God, you need to see between the lines. And understand that there is a supreme hand that rests over everything. And that person is your father. That person is your father. He can do all things. He can make things happen. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. He raises the poor. Listen, you must believe in the supernatural. You must believe in the grace of God that is beyond every form of limitation. Whether self-imposed, systems imposed, family imposed, and all of that. You know, that's why I don't mess about talking about, you know, all those ancestral demons. uh, You know, you know, there's some demons in my lineage that is going to stop me, that lying devil. I don't want to waste my time on all of that. You have a father who loves you with everything everlasting love you have a god who is saying i need your time with me i want you to be with me i can do for you more than you can ever do for yourself the blessing of the lord it makes rich and i ask no sorrow to it when the lord really blesses you you're not going to be a slave to anybody you're going to be in control of the things you do you're going to have time to serve god time to worship god time for your marriage time for your children until you begin to change your mindset Uh, these things will look too big for you but it starts right here you need to know that god doesn't want you to live another day of your life as a slave you need to understand you need to understand what i'm telling to you you right now you 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 might need five years to process it or even ten years to get around it but i'm just telling you the word of god Systems in place to hold people bound so that only you just you know your success is predetermined. But God raises the poor, 
from the dust and lift the beggar. <laughs> lift the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them in the area the throne of glory. That's your portion. You know why I can do that? Because for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. So he can decide who he is going to pick up and put on top of the pillar. Oh, somebody look at some third person, I believe. He will guard the feet of his saints. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not be swallowed up. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. For by strength no man shall prevail. The race is not to the sweet. The battle is not to the strong. Bread is not for the wise. Riches uh, 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 for men of understanding. Or even favor to men of skill. The way things are in life, you should believe this. You don't need scripture to just let you know that this is true. It's everywhere. How many times have you seen sisters serving the Lord beautiful, they can't get a husband? For nothing they've done wrong. And then you see people who spent all their life for Satan. Get husband quick. How many times have you seen people fasting and praying in the church for a breakthrough and it seems they haven't got it yet and then somebody comes to church one day and the pastor says receive it and they received it. Have you ever thought about those things? God, God, genuinely, listen to this. God, God will have mercy on who is going to have mercy. God, when you learn to depend on God, there are some of us here, listen to this, there are things in your life that might never happen until you just humble yourself and stop running around. Until you stop depending on your ability. They, you, if you want to be established and be settled in life. Let me just make this correction. That all these things I've said. I'm not talking about money. That's another mindset. Because people think to have peace in life to be established. It's all about how much money you've made. Just have a quick research on Google. And you will know that it's not true. Who would have thought that Bill Gates and his wife, with everything they've done, have always had problems? Oh, I don't know how to say this, but let me just tell you this. The grace of God is the only guarantee that you have. That all things will work together for your good. Not the word of the pastor, not the word of a prophet, not your accountant or lawyer or solicitor or any of those things. The grace of God. It has to be the power of God for it to be guaranteed. But within the parameters of human capacity, failure is normal. As long as you are depending on human strength and ability, you will be limited in life. And your results will be based on chances. And when I talk about results, I, now I don't want to start defining success. Success is not money, it's not cars, it's not houses. Success is the fulfillment of divine purpose. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be successful failures. Because they've done really well in the eyes of men. But when they stand in front of God, God would say that you didn't do your assignment. Because success in life is about doing the assignment that God has given to you. Not by getting the result that we approve of. We only approve of money. Anybody join me? 
Hello? We only approve of money. We only approve of what we can see. We only approve of that. So you're successful if you have a nice suit and you have a nice car and you have a nice house. You're successful. God is not marking all of that because he doesn't mean much to him because the Bible says that the cattle upon the thousand hills belong to God. If he's hungry, he just kills. You will fulfill purpose. As long as you depend on yourself, you may struggle. But Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who wait, hey, the race is not for the sweet, but those who wait on the Lord, by strength shall no man prevail. But those who wait on the Lord, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and falling, but we are risen and we stand upright. You will not fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who depend on the Lord. <laughs> you know, when we say those who wait on the Lord, most of us just delete the word wait and pull fast. No, that's not what it means. It just means those who wait on the Lord. That's what it means as a waiter in an hotel. You say those who wait on the Lord means when we are fasting, we are waiting. No, you are fasting, you are waiting. That's correct, but that's not what the scripture says. It just means those who wait on the Lord. Don't be smarter than the Holy Spirit. It just means those who wait on the Lord. Exactly what he says is what it means. Those who can wait on him. You know when you, 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 you a place that I know people really wait on you is South Africa. Because I don't know how they pay the waiters. I think they pay based on the food they sell in some of the restaurants. So they, they, they wait on you. Uh, I've been in places where they wait on you. They want you to buy more. They're begging you to buy. They wait on you. They want to serve you well. Another place where people really wait on you is the U.S. Because of the tip system. Because you're not going to tip the guy if he's not waiting on you. Praise God. So he's going to wait on you. Are you all right? Hey, yeah. Do you want more? Blah, blah, blah. They wait on you. Whatever you want, they'll do because of the tip. That's what it means. When you wait on God and you're saying, God, what's the next step? God, what do you want to eat? God, do you, do you need another drink? God, do you need another water? God, what, that's what it means to wait on God is to wait to serve. Waiting on God is waiting to save. Waiting on God is not fasting. Waiting on God is to wait on God. I don't know how to say it. It just means to wait on God, to be ready to serve, to say at your service, Lord, what can I do? What should I do? What will I give you? What do you want me to bring? That's what it means to wait on the Lord. People who wait on the Lord don't have their own time. People who wait on the Lord don't have their own agenda. People who wait on God, they are there for his will, his purpose, his agenda. He gives the instructions. Without instructions, they don't move. They only move on his instructions. And so the Bible says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Because it's not for nothing when you wait on the Lord. Uh, Moses was with the Lord for too long. The Bible said they could see the glory of the Lord on his face. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Some of you, you will go to work and people will be wondering what is happening. Because you will look different. Uh, you will look different. You will command respect. You will look different. You will be different. I'm, I'm telling you. You will be different. You just, you just be different. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You just be different for no reason. I don't know. But the grace. But the grace. But the grace. These things are true. You know, on, on, was it on Friday? It was it on Friday or last Sunday? You know, one of our brothers was saying that, you know, the students voted. Uh, and then they just called him that, that they said he's the best lecturer. I like that. And I remember, you see, that he, he's my brother. Because that's exactly what happened to me when I was at Preston College. The dean of engineering just called me. said, oh, Wellington, you know, we had this. And the student believes that you are the best lecturer. I said, correct. Now it's true, because these things happen. It's not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the Lord. There is a spirit of distinction that can be on you. When you are in a meeting, people will listen to you. God forbid that you are a child of God, and you sit on a table, and you can't even talk, because you don't know what to talk about. That's not grace. Stop depending on yourself. It's not working. Stop sweating unnecessarily. Learn to mount on eagle's wings. I believe for me and I believe for you also that if only we can humble ourselves, there's still so much more for you and I to do. 
Let me tell you this story. Let's quickly go to John chapter 5, 1 to 15. I'm not reading all of that. You know the story very well, but I'm going to talk through it and paraphrase and say a few things more. John chapter 5, 1 to 15. Ooh, I like this scripture. I like this scripture. I like this scripture. I like this scripture. Why? I like this scripture because you can teach just virtually anything you want to teach from the scripture. Amen. You can even teach two opposing, <laughs> opposing, opposing things from the same scripture. Somebody can go like that. Somebody can go like that. It's so powerful. John chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. The story of a man who was at the sheep gate, uh, the, the, the pool by the sheep gate, Bethesda, the name of the pool. And I don't want to go into typologies because people begin to say the five porches means the five days and the five stones that David threw and all of that. Don't worry about all of that. In this lay a great multitude of sick people. Everybody say sick people. I want to, you see, what I want to do with the scripture for about 20 minutes is I want to show you how some of these limitations are there for everyone and how that grace can break through. In this lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting. Everybody say waiting. For the moving of the water. And the Bible says for an angel will come from, you know, from, from down at a certain time. Everybody says certain time. Uh, to trouble the water. And whoever stepped in first. Everybody says stepped in first. After the standing of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. And now a certain man who had an infirmity, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Huh? Now, you know I talked about system at the beginning and I want to revisit that. Even though, you need to get this, even though... <laughs> This scripture is in the New Testament, but this is not a New Testament account. Because you don't have the new covenant until after Jesus Christ resurrected. So anything you read, the four gospels actually no new covenant. They're just written in the physical Bible of the new covenant. They belong to the Old Testament. It's simple because Jesus Christ shed his blood for the new covenant. And so he couldn't be alive. And then you have the covenant. The blood had to be shed. So you, the New Testament actually started from the Acts of the Apostles. After that Jesus Christ had gone. Now you need to understand this. For you to be able to understand some of the things that happened whilst Jesus was here. Because many of us, we just speak some of those things and plant them in the New Testament without understanding the typologies. Now, you get to pardon me. So, here now, you need to understand that this wasn't New Testament. This was Old Testament. Because it was what has been happening probably before Jesus was born. Are you following me now? So, there was a system in place. A fantastic system where the water was there in Bethesda called House of Mercy. And then you could go in when the angel troubles the water. And then you get healed. Now, I want you to follow this. It's a system. Everybody say it's a system. It's a system set up because of the mercy of God. But, I want to use this word. Unfortunately, because it's within the parameters of the Old Testament, you still have to do something to get it. And it's not available all the time. So, the blessing was there, but not everybody could get it. It's only going to be some people. Uh, if I have time, I'll preach on this a little bit. So it's a system. It's survival of the fittest. It's only people who had connection who will make it. Because the man, you know, the man said, Jesus said, you, the man said to Jesus, I had no man to put me there. And what we've been taught in the church is to abuse him. 
I say, how can he not have anybody? How can somebody be in this world and you don't have anybody? You are the only one. Is it because you don't understand how things work? Can I ask you a question? How many of us here, when you really go through tough times, nobody called you? Because when you have been in a problem for 38 years, you actually might not have anybody. Because you see, human beings don't like to suffer with people for long. Uh, they like to enjoy with you for a long time. But if you want to suffer, you better suffer for a little while. Because if you suffer for a long time, you won't find them. You see, you can abuse the friends of Job, but those guys were good. Because they stayed around or took of the predicament of Job. But you don't have all that kind of friends around. You just need to be sick for one year. And then the number begin to drop. And after five years, they're going to write you off. And they begin to pray that you will die will be better. So you're wondering why he doesn't have a man and you want to blame him. You'll be sick for 38 years and show me how many people will be there. Be poor for 38 years and show me how many people will come to your party. Be, be be, be broke and busted for 38 years huh? and think you still have anybody who will believe in you. You know, there are many of us, nobody believes in us. Huh? You have been through sufficient mess huh? that people have counted you off. Huh? And it's going to be a waste of time for you to even be delivered because there's nothing left inside of you such that even if we deliver you, you're already useless. Huh? So this man had nobody. Yet nobody. I don't, I don't want to blame him. I like to think like Jesus Christ. Because you wouldn't read any verse in any of those accounts that Jesus complained about what he said. The church complained. No way. Jesus didn't complain. Jesus didn't say, why did you not have any man? You too, what have you been doing there? What have you been looking? <laughs> you know, some of us are great counselors. Wow. What have you been looking? You were there for 38 years. 38 years. Uh -uh. You know, even if you have been crawling. You remember, you remember? You see, most of our counseling are so shallow. They're so shallow. Even if you have been crawling, you have not been there. How did you know that you didn't crawl? So you should go and crawl and stay beside the water so that when crocodile comes, they will become a prey. Because you're not thinking about all of that. You think it's easy. You say, even if you have been crawling, you know, we say all manner of things because you don't understand God. It was a system. And the system is simple. It's survival of the fittest. If you have good connection, you're going to make it. If you are powerful, you're going to make it. And if you're slow, you're never going to make it. You've got to be fast and you've got to be fast. If you're first, you have your miracle. If you're second, you lose your miracle. It's a system. It's a system. And that system has failed many of us, if you want to be sincere with yourself. Because you have much more to give, but the system won't give you space. It's a system. The system didn't work for this man. The system didn't work. It's like Deuteronomy chapter 28. Fantastic scripture that many of us like. You know, if you do this, do this, I'll bless you. But if you do this, don't do this, do this, I will curse you. And a lot of Christians, that is their map for life. You don't understand grace. We are in a dispensation, now got to follow this, where we don't get things because of what we've done. It is the Old Testament works like this. You get what you work for. If you can get into the water, you get healed. But if you can't get to the water, you remain sick. If you have someone to get you there, you need a network. And that's why we say things like your network is your network. Amen. And we get excited about it. But what happens if somebody doesn't have a network? Then that means they have zero net worth. Because these systems are not favorable for everyone. Let me just say this. If you're here and you like to work hard for everything you have in life, keep on sweating. If you're here, you want to pay for everything you get. Keep on paying. You don't need anybody to bless you. You don't need anybody to give you anything. You just want to sweat it out. Keep on sweating. I just pray you will not be too tired at the end of the day. There was nothing wrong with the system. But just that the need of this particular man was not met by the system. Listen to this. 
Oh my God, can I preach a little bit? There are things in your life that didn't work, not because anything was wrong with you, but because God wants to walk with you in a different way. Uh, yeah, uh, there are things that didn't add up, and you struggled, and you asked questions. Why is it that everybody gets into the water to get healed? And why is it that everybody has people to get them? What God is trying to tell you is that you are not like them, and that what He's planning for you is bigger and better and superior. God, oh my God, God was trying. Jesus was waiting. God was trying to use this man to show us uh, that the grace of God can sustain systems. Uh, the grace of God can sustain the Sabbath. Uh, the grace of God can sustain the network uh, to give you a blessing. The grace of God can give you what you shouldn't get. Uh, and you don't have uh, any man to help you. Grace can help you. When you have no network, God can be your network. Uh, for we know and we say that one with God some things are not possible, but not with God, for with God, all things are possible. I, I want some of this faith to begin to rise up right now. Jesus didn't blame the man. Jesus wasn't judgmental. Let me just say this. Be careful how you blame people because things are not working in their life. Please be careful. That means you don't understand grace. If you understand grace, you will not open your mouth another day of your life to condemn people or to speak against them because they're going through a bad patch in their life. You should have known what to do. Mm. If you went to the hospital and you don't know your height from your nose, you won't say that. If you understand grace, you thank God for where you are, but you also thank God for where he's taking that sister. Don't blame people because God will turn everybody's story around for good. So let's begin to bring this to a close. Then Jesus came to the scene and Jesus asked him a question. Do you want to be made well? Verse 7, the sick man answered and said, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is still, but while I'm coming, Everybody say, while I'm coming. So some of you who thought the guy was lazy, he was always coming. He was always trying his best. He was always trying to do something. And Jesus didn't complain, didn't say anything. There was no judgment, judgment passed. There was no comment made, nothing. And Jesus just said to the man, rise up. Take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the man knew that this is not story time. And immediately, the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Now, follow this closely. The limitation that the man had first was the system. The limitation that he had was that he had no man. Obviously, his primary limitation was that he was sick. But I want to tell you that the grace of God can operate beyond all of those limitations. No matter what the system is that you find yourself, the grace of God can go beyond it. If the limitation is that you don't have anybody to help you with God, all things are possible. If the limitation is that you are even within yourself, you are struggling, the grace can give you strength. Grace beyond limitations. But then the man faced another great problem, but thank God he overcame. Because Jesus came on the Sabbath to heal this man. And this is another limitation. This is very, very serious. Because it was a Sabbath, the people were angry. They said, why are you carrying your mat on the Sabbath? You know, because people don't know your story. They are used to you suffering. So when you smile, they are angry that you are smiling. When people don't know your story, when you give your testimony, they're thinking, what is the big deal about what he's saying? Mm. When people don't know your story, because they got it on the platter of gold, when God is doing yours, uh, they have this big mount, uncontrollable, you know, contribution, and they just say whatever they like. And people like that are very judgmental. They're quick to pick faults. They're quick to explain to you that you shouldn't do it like that. They're quick to tell you that no, that's not how to preach. 
They're quick to tell you that mm, when you sing, you sing like this. They're quick to tell you that when you want to go to work, this is how to dress. They're quick to tell you all of those things because suddenly they are now the chief of revelations. And so they came to the man and they said, why are you carrying? It's the Sabbath. I call them law enforcers. They are evil. They are like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They believe that everything has to be according to the law. It has to be, you work for it, you get it. You don't work, you don't get it. We don't do it on, on Sabbath day. The devil is a liar. If you really want to enjoy the grace of God, you must know that you need faith. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 12, it says, yet the law is not of faith. And we not said all the time that we need faith. The Bible said the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. That's not faith. Hey, if, if you live only by the things you do, that's not faith. If you only get what you work for, that's not faith. The law is not faith. What is the law? The man, the man who does them shall live by them. Any error, you'll be punished. And that's why Jesus looked to somebody and said, I've kept the law. Jesus laughed. No man can keep the law. The only person that kept it was Jesus. And he kept it for, you know what, for me. So that I don't have to keep it. You know, somebody, if you don't get this, you think we're talking about being loose. No. If you understand grace, I say this all the time. Grace, it's not just to stop you from sinning. Grace is an empowerment to live the life of God. Those who talk about the kind of grace that makes them sin more so that they can be forgiven, they don't understand what they're talking about. You cannot have it and pretend you don't have it. If you have grace, it's not so that you don't sin. Oh my God, that's too small. If you have grace, it's not so that you get saved well, you know because you are sin is that you have an empowerment the bible says sin shall not have dominion over you the kind of grace i'm talking about it's not the one that makes you say god i've done it again god god no 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 that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the grace that changes your whole perception about life that changes the way you behave the way you talk the way you act i'm talking about the grace that you can forgive effortless you don't have to think about it i'm talking about the grace that you do the things of god you don't think about it i'm talking about the grace you give to God, you are not miserly and keep all your money in your pocket. I'm talking about the grace of God uh, that you can share your knowledge with people and bless people with what you need. I'm talking about the grace of God that empowers you to live the life of God. The law is not a faith, it's not a faith. You watch every step you take, you watch everything you say, bound in bondage because any mistake you pay for it. That's not the kind of God I serve. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Look at some 30 person, you need faith. But the law is not of faith, the Bible says. You need faith. Uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 16, he says, Therefore, therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. Listen to this. Oh, come on. Can I show you this? When you go back to the beginning, we said, the race is not to the swift. Uh, it's not. It's not. Time and chance happen to all of them. The battle is not for the strong. There's no bread doesn't come to the wise. Time and chance happen to them all. But I wanted to change something right now. I want you to see that your life can be guaranteed. Hallelujah. You can be sure that you are not going to be broke another day of your life. You can be sure that you make right decisions in your finances. You can be sure that it's going to be well with your children. You can be sure that God is going to cause you to fulfill your purpose listen to this there's a guarantee but that guarantee is not within your power that guarantee is not within your ability that guarantee is submitting to the power of God can I say this many times we fail not because of anything you know you know it's just because we're being human but what I'm trying to tell you is this the arm of flesh will always fail but I wanted to move beyond the arm of flesh into the grace of God so that the limitation of your flesh can be dealt away can be done away with I want you to move beyond that so that the limitations of finances can leave you alone so that the limitations of no network, no power no everything, you can leave all of that and you can move into the abundance of God, so the Bible said therefore it is of faith it is of faith 
he that must come to God must know that God is. It's of faith that it might be according to grace. So that, if you forget anything, please don't forget this. The promise might be sure to all the seed. It is of faith that it might be according to grace. But the law is not faith. But it is of faith so that it can be according to grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Jesus came to the scene and told the man, take it, rise up. We need faith because it is through the word of God. Follow this. It is through the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, the word by there is very important because uh, it's not just talking about hearing it twice. It's telling you that the process the 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 ingredients the essence the vehicle of hearing is the word of god you see that's what he's saying do, do you get it now this hearing by the word in other words it is through the means of the word I, I don't know why we just throw away the word throw away the english and create another meaning no hearing by the word it has a meaning by the word in other words the word becomes the vehicle for hearing that's why god can still speak to you through dream but there has to be verification through the word hallelujah that's why god can speak to you through prophecy but there has to be verification verification by the word and that's why god doesn't speak and faith doesn't come except through the word and that's why no matter what anybody says to you it has to be by the word do you get what i'm saying now so that's faith. So why am I mentioning the word? Because without the release of the word of God, there can never be the manifestations of grace. The word will come forth. And then faith in the word will give you access to everything that grace has provided. The word will come. The word will be spoken. The word will be released. And then you have faith in the word of God. Which comes through the word of God. And it is through that. That you can have access to everything. That grace has provided. So if you want the manifestations. Of grace in your life. Then you need faith. In God. And for you to have faith in God. You need the word of God. So when you have the word of God. God, and you have faith in the word of God then everything that grace has provided will be made manifest in your life and that's why we say all that I have needed the hands are provided but how do we have manifestation because we need faith and so he says therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace that the promise might be sure to all the seed Let me say this. I told us the law is no faith. But then, Jesus spoke to the man. And Jesus gave him a commandment. Jesus told him, pick, rise up, take your man and walk. So what's the difference? Follow this, you need to get this right. The mistake people make is this. They don't know the difference between law and instructions. For you to walk in faith, you always need instruction. That's not law. Law is generic. Everybody say generic. Law is the same all the time. Thou shalt not kill. That's not for you or for me. It's for all of us. But instructions, follow this. Instructions are specific. If you really want the manifestation of the power of God, what you need is not a law, you need instructions. And that's why you see through from the beginning of scripture, from the beginning, you will see that every time God is about to turn somebody's story around, he gives instructions. 
It doesn't turn some of the specific story around by reading Deuteronomy chapter 28. No, it doesn't turn anybody's story around by reading Exodus chapter 20, 10 commandments. No, it doesn't happen. You don't see that in your Bible. When he was about to deliver the children of Israel, he spoke to Moses. He spoke to Moses. When they got to the Red Sea, Moses spoke to God and God spoke to Moses. Pull down the road and divide the sea. You got to understand this. The law cannot release to you the manifestation of the grace of God. The law is dead. The Lord kills. It binds. It confines people. Puts you in 38 years of slavery and you can get out of it. But one moment of hearing God's instruction. I pray in the name of Jesus that your ears will be open and your heart will be open, that your spirit will be open, that you will be humble to hear what God is saying to you because God is speaking to somebody right now. You cannot continually reject the word of God and expect the manifestation of God. You cannot turn your back on his instructions and expect something to move and to happen in your life. It doesn't happen like that God always gives instructions. You know, I can go through the Bible another day, I will show you. But listen to this. We move out of Moses and you move into any other person. It's by instruction. Let's jump quickly to the New Testament. It's by instruction. The first miracle of Jesus, it wasn't by the Lord. It was by instruction. Go and fill the water pots with water. Take the water, go give to the steward. And it turned to wine. It's by instruction. When Jesus wanted to open somebody's eyes, what did he tell them? By instruction instructions. He poured the saliva together, anointed the eyes. He said, go and show yourself. Instructions. Any how you see it, it is instruction. When you come to the apostles, it's still instructions. Listen to this. The law is generic. That's not what you need. You need God to speak to you. It's always instructions. I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to stand on your feet. There's grace beyond every limitation. I don't know what has limited you until today. I don't know what you've been struggling with, brother. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. Brothers, God is saying something to you. Listen to Him. There's grace. And let me tell you something the story of the man changed completely. Because Jesus spoke and the man did it. And everything about Sabbath suspended. Every angel staring water unnecessary. Swimming in the water not required. Man to get me into the water. I don't need no man. And so after Jesus spoke. Poke my keyboard or sin hand. That was the end of every limitation. He didn't need no man. He didn't need no angel. There was no need for anybody to take him to the water. There was no need for the angel to stay in the water. There was no need for him to get into the water. There was no need for all of those things. And everything that stood as a limitation in the life of this man, when Jesus showed up, Everything, when Jesus showed up, everything suddenly, everything suddenly in a twinkle of an hour, just like that, everything suddenly disappeared. I don't know who I'm speaking to you right now. You got to listen to God's word. Don't struggle with your life. God loves you so much. He's always saying something. He's always giving you instruction. He's always saying something. He's always saying something. If you want the manifestation of this grace uh, that exceeds, uh, you know, no, I, 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 I've not finished the message. You see, Jesus Christ operated as though the law was not existing. He, 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 he voluntarily forgot <laughs> that it was the Sabbath. So he, he <laughs> Listen to this. When God decides to speak to you, nothing matters more. Ezekiel said, the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. There is grace above every limitation. I don't know what the limitation is right now. I want to bow your head and begin to pray.